Hi everybody, I don't know if you remember the Japanese inventor who came up with an emergency generator that would run in our drains, sewers, uh, downpipes, that kind of thing. It was based on an Archimedes screw. Now I found this on Thingiverse and of course you can scale these things to whatever you want. So I grabbed this, scaled it so that it would fit in this bit, a bit of sewer pipe. This is 110 millimeters, and the screw fits in there with a millimeter to spare. Now we did make this out of some old CDs and some plumbing pipe and it was a little ropey but it did actually work. But of course I'll give you something this and um, I thought we'd give that another go, but this time just a smidge more accurately. So, I've printed four of these things. Actually, the fourth one is just printing. I'm going to grab myself a bit of sewer pipe, glue those together, and we can stick that in there. And then, of course, we can see how it's going to work. Now, the great thing about this is, although I've chosen sewer pipe because I just want a nice big version, um, it would do exactly the same in a rainwater downpipe. So you could print a whole lot of these, stack them in your drain pipe, stick it in there, and you have a rainwater generator, which is pretty cool. But we're going to make this slightly larger scale one, so let's wait for this to finish printing, which is about 10 minutes time or so, glue them together and get them in some drain pipe. So I've cleaned off the swarf, which is that little sticky out bit of plastic that held it onto the table, and what I've done is I've prepared these three bits of copper pipe. I've just put a little bit of tape around it so that it's quite a tight fit in there because that's kind of going to be a guiding peg for when I put those together, so I can put that together, give it a twist, and it's going to be held together with super glue. For the end pieces, I've got these. These are copper fittings. This is 15 mil. This comes out as 8 mil. So what I can do is feed an 8 mil pipe down there to give me a bearing. So something, an axle, that I can put into the bearings. Anyway, let's put that all together. Okay, that's it strung together on that bit steel bar, and you can see the plumbing fittings are holding it nice and tight and keeping it true. So now we can stuff it in our drain pipe. <laughs> so, on the bottom of my waste pipe, I've just drilled these holes. They're drain holes, somewhat obviously. And then I've made a cap, and the cap just goes in there. We glue that in, and we drop that into that cap, and that will centre it. So I've put this little foot on it to hold it at an angle. Now, that's because it's a test. Clearly, if we would put this in a stream, then the river would come here, the stream rather, be blocked and only have this exit to go to. If we were going to put it into a drain, well, you'd put a swept what, a T fitting on it or something like that. But I'm going to do this because I want to pour a bucket of water in there to simulate the water flow. So I just need to put a little box on there, and you guessed it, I'm making out of this stuff which is uh, UPVC with a foam core. We use it in the UK for building all the time. I use it for lots and lots of stuff, and I've mentioned it many times. But I'm going to build a little box on there that we can pour that water into. It is with this little box. Now, we're going to simulate a head of water like you'd get in a river or a drain or when you empty your bath or flush your loo. And we're going to do that with a bucket of water. Now, it'll rotate, and you need to watch that bottom so that you can see it rotating. Here we go. Okay, so that worked. It was quite a bit of fun, actually. Now, I did it this way to show you how you might do a gutter installation. So you'd have a swept T here, your gutter's going up here. Rainwater comes down, gets flowed over the Archimedes screw, straight down your gutter, and of course you stick your generator motor here. So that's one way you might implement this as a rainwater uh, energy scavenger. But these things, of course, they come in many different guises. So we've done a sealed pipe with it rotating in the pipe. Some people suggest that you glue the whole thing to the pipe so the whole pipe rotates. The idea being that as the water isn't spilling over, it's trapped in the pipe, it's more efficient. Well, <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? 
I mean, you know, you do have a great deal of engineering by putting massive bearings on here, and of course, the friction of a larger bearing, probably the efficiencies gained by sealing to the pipe are lost by the size of the bearings and the rest of the engineering you've got to do. It all turns out usually to be a bit of six and two threes, but when people get an idea in the head, of course, they love it and will defend it to the death. But you get different types, that's the point. One type is the type we've just shown here, where the screw rotates in a pipe. The other type would be where the pipe actually rotates with the screw fixed and it still works as a generator. And there's another type that you see quite often where it's only a half pipe. This top section is removed. There are reasons for doing stuff like that. I mean, on a set, um, something like this, if you get leaves down there, then you're likely to jam it. And the same thing if it's actually the whole pipe, if it clogs, that's it. With a half section, it's much easier to clean out. So with lots of these things, it's all a bit six and two threes about what you go for and what is appropriate to the situation. So if you're doing rainwater gutters, well, just put one of those cages at the top so the leaves can't go down. It seems pretty easy. It's really a question of what suits you. Now, I quite like this design, but I also quite like being able to see into it and to be able to clean it because it's mesmeric watching that screw go around. Absolutely love it. So I'm going to take the top off and we'll have a look at it without the top. So here is the open version. Now remember, it's exactly like the pipe version. It's just I want you to see the screw turning because it's pretty cool. I put a motor on here which came from an air conditioner. That's our generator. It's attached to this little lighting bank so we can see it do something. Now, if you were to use this for rainwater, obviously the rainwater would just empty into there. Now some people will say, huh, rainwater, you're not going to get a lot from that. If you've been in England this last week, there's been a ton of rain. I'm willing to bet you could light your house with it. But I'm kidding, but there is a power there to be scavenged for sure, and this is a pretty good way of scavenging it. Anyway, let's pour some water on that and see it light up. Okay, it's gonna go for its maiden voyage. Ross from Intelligent Tinkering has turned Hello. up, and of course Luke from TNT, so let's give it a go and see. Whoa! <laughs> it's lighting, is it? Oh yeah. We have lights. That's awesome. Ta da! <laughs> nice. Okay, so that worked a treat, and you got to see it work a treat, which I think is really cool. Now, remember the Japanese invented this, that uh, Japanese chap invented this as an emergency generator. So it's, it'll run off loads of different ways of running it. And obviously, if we dumped the rainwater in there, and I assure you, there's been a lot of rainwater where I live over the last week or so, we have ourselves an emergency generator, and it's pretty powerful, actually, because you've got quite a lot of talk on this. Now, of course, we 3D printed this, but remember, we did do an Archimedes screw using old CDs and a bit of plumbing pipe, so you can make this by hand. It's just that this is a little easier for people who've got 3D printers, a little more accurate, and it spins beautifully. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.